If you have not installed the Windows 2004 feature update, you may want to put it on hold for now. Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. I have recently introduced Windows 10's 2004 feature update. However, after installing the update, there are some problems that you need to be aware. Now, Microsoft is working to resolve them, so before you install the feature update, here are the known issues you may face after installing the new feature update. The Deployment Image Servicing and Management tool is used to prepare, modify, and repair the system image. It includes the Windows Recovery Environment, Windows Setup, and Windows Pre-Installed Environment. The problem is after you run the tool's Restore Health command, the tool is incorrectly indicating corruption is still present after the repair. Now, Microsoft has stated that even though the tool reports corruption is still present after the repair, subsequent scans should indicate the true state of the corruption. To verify that the DISM did fix the problem, you can run the same command again, or you can run the scan health command. Now, Microsoft is expected to have this fixed in mid-June of 2020. The variable refresh rate is not working properly on devices using Intel's integrated GPU. The VRR enabled support for DirectX 11 full screen games that did not support VRR nat natively. So these games could benefit from the VRR hardware. You can check the display adapter in Device Manager to see if you have an Intel GPU. When you open the Device Manager, you'll see up here where it says Display Adapters. If you double click it to open it, it just will sure currently show which display adapter you have. Now the variable refresh rate issue is only affecting computers that have the Intel integrated GPU. Users with NVIDIA GPUs should not install the feature update. The update causes stop errors with blue screen or instabilities with Windows 10. In my case, I have two PCs, including this one, that has an NVIDIA GPU, as you see here. And I had major problems with the Windows 10 stability after installing the 2004 feature update. It would gradually slow down to the point it would not respond to anything, forcing me to power cycle the computer and restart it. I had to restore the operating system back to version 1909. According to Microsoft, this only affected driver versions 358.00 and lower. But as you can see, I have version 391.35 installed. So I'm suspecting that the problem may also be involved with specific models of NVIDIA GPUs. Because this one here, the last time it was updated, um, it was March of 2018, which is over two years ago, and it hasn't received an update since. Um, I did check, and there, th this is the latest update that there is for this graphics card. So it's probably something to do with certain models. If you use Bluetooth to connect your computer to your devices, you may want to check to see if you have a specific adapter. Now, if you go to the device manager, you'll see Bluetooth. Now, this computer doesn't have it yet, but you will find Bluetooth in this uh, category up here. And what you want to do is you want to check to see if it is a real tech Bluetooth adapter. The problem with the feature update is something is causing the adapter to only connect to one device. Now, by default, Bluetooth has the ability to connect to multiple devices at a time, but in the feature update, it prohibits it from connecting to more than one device. Now, the adapter works fine, and it does not cause any major problems with Windows 10. 
The problem is the feature update that prevents the Bluetooth from connecting to multiple devices at the same time. Now, if you only have one device that you connect to it, then you're okay. But for those of you who do use multiple devices connected to your computer using Bluetooth, you might want to hold off on the install of the, of the, of the update. The next problem I'm going to discuss, uh, the known issue, is uh, the sound and audio hardware. Uh, if you have the Connexent ISST audio installed, you will receive error and experience issues while installing the update or after the device has updated. Now, the affected devices will be named Connexent ISST audio or Connexent HD audio driver that you'll see in the sound properties here under device manager. Now it does use the file names UCI64A96.dll through UCI64A231.dll and the file versions will be lower than 7.231.3.0. Now, to see if you do have the files, you'll need to go into System Information and go under Sound Device and under the Components. And if you look down here, uh, you'll locate your audio hardware and you'll see the driver. And this will tell you the name of the file and which version it is. Now, you may also get a blue screen error that occurs if you have a connection HD audio driver that uses versions 8.65.47.53, 8.65.56.51, or 8.66.0.0 through 8.66.89.00 for the CHDRT64.SYS or the chdrt32.csys. If you do have uh, any of these, uh, you want to hold off on the uh, 2004 feature update until the problem can be resolved. Now, if you are using a Thunderbolt dock like this one, uh, you might receive a stop error with a blue screen when plugging or unplugging a Thunderbolt dock. Now, the affected Windows 10 devices will have at least one Thunderbolt port. They'll have the kernel DMA protection enabled and Windows hypervisor platform disabled. Now, if you do use a Thunderbolt, you may want to make sure that you do not install the update until the problem can be fixed. If you're using mobile devices that use the always on, always connected feature, you will experience errors or unexpected restarts after the feature update is installed. Now this affects Asus, HP, Lenovo's, Microsoft, and Samsung PCs that utilize the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. Microsoft did resolve this issue with the build 19041.329 as of this video. And Microsoft will be removing the block in Windows Update in the coming weeks. The next issue refers to apps and drivers that use aksfridge.sys or aksdf.sys. Now, if the files are present, the feature update will either fail to install or Windows will not start after the update. Now the files are filter drivers used to control digital right management content. They are part of the hardware against software piracy developed by Alandon Knowledge Systems, now Jamalto. Now you will need to perform a search on your PC to see if either file is present. If they are present, do not install the feature update until the problem can be resolved. This next problem is for laptop users. After installing the feature update, Windows 10's battery saver feature appears to be disabled and is not documented as a known issue with Microsoft. 
I discovered this issue when I upgraded my laptops to the 2004 feature update. When you open the Action Center, you'll notice that the battery saver is turned off or disabled. Now, if you were to click it, it should change color to indicate that it's on, and it says battery saver on. Now, for this computer you see here, it's, um, it's you can tell it's disabled. Uh, that's because this is a desktop computer, and I'm using a battery backup unit as to why it shows the battery down here. But on laptops, it should change colors when it's turned on. And all it does is just, uh, you click it, the screen flashes, says off, and then it switches back to being disabled. Now, this is only a minor glitch. I mean, this does not affect anything about the operating system. Now, you can still enable the battery saver mode by clicking the battery icon. And as you can see, this in here doesn't support the uh, battery because my computer doesn't actually have a battery. But with laptops, you'll see a, a slider that runs across here. Uh, if you move it to the right, um, it allows the computer to have more performance, consume more energy. But if you switch it all the way to the left, you can turn on and enable the battery saver mode. So it's not entirely disabled, it's just you have to go about it a different way in order to get the battery saver mode to turn on. Now I suspect it's just a glitch in the Action Center or it may be something that Microsoft is in the process of changing as to how you enable the battery saver, battery saver mode. Next, there is an incompatibility issue that was found between some apps and games that use Game Input Redistributable and Windows 10's 2004 feature update. The affected apps and games might lose mouse input after installing this update. Now note that the Game Input Redistributable might be bundled with apps and games and is sometimes silently installed during the installation of that app or game. So if you check under apps, uh, if you do have the Game Input Redistributable, uh, you may want to wait on installing the update until Microsoft can resolve the issue. And finally, some apps utilize the input method editor mode property to control the IME mode for individual text entry fields to increase typing efficiency. The problem is that some IMEs in Windows 10 version 2004 might have issues using the property under certain apps. Meaning, for instance, uh, it may not switch from one language to another language automatically. So if you do use the input method editor, uh, you may want to hold off on the feature update until Microsoft can resolve the problem. Now, Microsoft has put a block in the Windows Update client for the issues with the 2004 feature update and they do not recommend that you manually install the feature update. If you get a message that it's being delayed, just leave it at that because your computer is currently being blocked from installing the 2004 feature update. Microsoft is working with vendors to try and resolve these issues that I've mentioned. Uh, if you have any problems with the Windows 10, be sure to use a feedback cup. Um, that way they can be aware as to any issues that you may be having. Um, if you have upgraded to the 2004 feature update and you're having problems, uh, be sure to use that feedback hub so Microsoft can be informed. Well, I am your host, Richard Fixit. Thank you for watching.